Okay, 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 pilot people. Today is many, many people have been asking me, and I've been hearing it for from old corners of the galaxy. Is the Earth flat? And in my opinion, which I'm entitled to have, no. Um, why I'm sharing this is if people wander around with elusive concepts that are not real, it's like saying there's a crossing, there are two mountains, and there's a bridge when there is no bridge, it's imaginary. And then I'll tell the person that has the theory, well, if there's a bridge and you imagine that so hard, why don't you show me that you can walk the bridge? And guess what? They have to walk down the valley, come up on the other side, haven't made the experience saying, um, I guess uh, it was all in my head. So the um, idea of, sorry, stuff lying around here. The idea of flat earth is an old concept from the church and the old hopium manipulation of a regulatory religio to believe something that you do not know so in order for the others to have control is it was devised by the church to control people as if there's an edge that you fall off into the abyss or hellfire which is also another fabrication of the old church system which used to be the government so why I feel the flat earthers mean well but they got it all wrong and I love you flat earthers and I love when people do your flat earth barbecue <laughs> do your do you do your flat burgers I like to have a fat burger and um, you have to come to a realization that in spirit this existence is a plane yes in spirit okay in spirit a molecule can be a phase as a plane but realistically when it becomes physical for a moment in space and time it, it is seemingly solid for a minute as in that frequency it becomes an object and when you have that happening you have something physical so we are in a physical universe we're dealing with matter matter i all do we agree so here, here's one experiment for the flat earthers because here's the thing also which i find funny that I saw a documentary where a dude swear he ha would have a proof of how his experiment would prove that Earth is flat. And I tried to find any scientific evidence or anything, which you, you have to also find, you have to anchor in. If you want the also uh, uh, paranormal stuff in order for that to happen or to remember that and not forget where we've been and how we have to come back to recalibrating ourselves, there has to be a little bit of physical evidence. And Here's an experiment that you can do. People, do it with your drone. Do it with your drone. And read the readings. I did it, and that's very interesting. So I'm gonna give you the, the, the experiment, first of all, that proves that Earth is spherical. One is if you see astronauts in space, Okay, we're not talking about moon or moon landings or when they fake or whatever. We're talking about when gravity is dissolved around you. What happens to liquids? Are they turning into a flat disk? No, they become spherical. You can watch that on YouTube. A guy squirts out some liquid and it becomes this. Naturally. All molecular structure in liquid form when gravity is dissolved becomes a sphere. That means it is volumetric. On flat earth that wouldn't be possible because you're talking about something as flat without volume. That is impossible. Also, why I know I have the proof and you can test that yourself. You put a laser on the shore, mount that to a certain height and have a bolt big enough a one motor boat you can test that and have a target have that mounted put that target up and have the laser hit the target and you can do it yourself people that live in California by the coast or Hawaii or Kauai or Oahu all of those you can do that yourself then you go with your boat out three miles okay you already see where this is leading up to Three miles, and I want the flat earthers to explain to me. And I allow constructive criticism. If it's murder, mayhem, and you know, destructive and attack mode and stupidness, 
and weirdness you're blocked and you're not allowed because we're here with open source and we're working together and if you can debunk me I'll bow and look at how you're going to do that and I want to see the visual concept so what I'm showing you is why flat earth in the physical doesn't exist is this after three miles out the target that the laser hits shifts by six feet roughly so every mile oops, every mile by two feet so when you're on that boat you gotta raise your flag all the way up till you hit that laser that laser is unchanged this has to be lifted by six feet simple science when that is six feet under and this is the original height you have a curvature in the lake that means it's dropping and the further out you go the more you lose the laser you understand laser <laughs> <laughs> so here's um and then you can debate that or argue that When you have a drone, simple experiment. And you fly out with the drone this way. And you want to have the same height. Your visual detection system corrects the distance from the drone to the lake all the time because there's a drop. Now here's the deal, when you turn off the visual detection system of your drone, it no longer recalibrates to the original height. Let's say you are 111 feet above ground and you're flying these 111 feet out with your drone without detecting the surface, without recalibrating your height, which is what planes have to do when they fly. All the time, they have to, if it's cruise control, that has to be continuously corrected. Your drone will do this. And after three miles, your drone will probably hover above 117 feet. Depending on the winds and currents, it can even be 120. Why is that? Because the lake drops. The drone just stays, stays where it's mounted basically, you can say, in the air and you do this and the feet change. And I'm not talking up and down like you fly over a highway and this and that and the other. You will see the difference. But the best experiment is with the laser because it's less influenced. Six, six feet, your boat will drop. And, you know, when people said it doesn't drop out of visual range, it has been tested with high-tech cameras, the boat kind of does this. You know, you see it in Pirates of the Caribbean, where you, you think the boat is just disappearing and then what they show us is actually sinking in the water. So people use these, these analogies and these uh, laws of physics to, to show you Earth is round. Also, why is Earth spherical? It has a dimension. So if you read Vedic texts that are like more than 10,000 years old, you have a length, you're in a, you're in a 3D plane. Yes, we're about to go 4D, we're about to go 5D. 4D just means mastering the thought level, the thought realm, yeah? And 5D means making it instant, miraculously and manifesting your dream life quicker than you thought it would happen. That's basically what 5D is. And 5D also means uh, we have a hoverboard now. You know, 10 years ago, uh, no, 20 years ago when uh, Back to the Future came out, they're like, yeah, that's crap, this can never happen. Now there's a guy named Frank Zapata who developed a jet-controlled hoverboard it is, it's not anti-gravity, but it somehow kind of beats gravity a little bit by using a propulsion system to levitate. So we thought it was possible, now it's possible. More impossible things will be possible because we're moving towards that dimension. Like the density of that time compression from 2012 has left us. So, 
So what we have in the Vedic text, so you know that, you have a length dimension, you have a depth dimension, and you have a width or breadth dimension. What does that mean? That, def that defines stuff has to be volumetric. So if you see a human body, and this is the shadow, in order for you on a three-dimensional plane to perceive a shadow, you need a volumetric holographic projection. That's physics, that can't be debated or debunked. This volume is needed in order for you to show you this shadow. So if I make this flat here, like if that was me and I would be a disc, guess what, no shadow. So you couldn't be in this dimension. So Earth is not flat, okay? And I believe in that trees, that mesas are petrified, tree stumps. I believe that. I believe giants were walk the earth. I believe we have fossils that defy physics, hip bones that are bigger than me, that are in museums, that are out. I believe all that. But we should not get lost in esoteric nonsense because we're trying to figure out or trying to make sense to this world. And I know you flat earthers, I love you very much, and I know you mean well. In spirit, Earth is a plane, yeah, a plane of existence, but that is in the imagination eye. There is no edge where a human being will fall off into the abyss. That doesn't happen, yeah, and, 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 and the concoctory that I hear is that well, we really, really have to stop doing this. Say, when you walk here, there's a dimensional trick. It is seamless and you come out on the other side. That's BS, it's absolute utter nonsense. That is physically not happening, why? Because so far, I haven't seen a stargate yet where somebody walks in here and comes out here. You understand? I believe that's possible and I believe when we have the, the technology developed, then it will be shown and then it will be known. But before that, it's a theoretical construct. So know the difference between virtual space and reality. So, let me explain to you what the Vedic papers explain why this is a dimension that is not flat, okay? You have length dimension. Length dimension is the knowledge, okay? So you know. If I have typos, I'm dyslexic, I'm like, it's all a mess, so never mind. Length dimension is to read something whether you understand it or not it's besides the point you read it and you store it okay you study that that's the length dimension that means you know the description of something knowledge okay know the ledge okay you could say i can walk from here to there and that's a there's a 500 foot drop hence when the wind blows in that direction i shall walk that direction for safety that is observation and mastering the length dimension many don't even have that down then you have the depth dimension that is now here is the description of how to build something like a motor the depth dimension allows you to put it to paper and draw out a schematic and put it in the three-dimensional form. That requires volume. Okay, without volume, ain't nothing. My, lo my lungs don't have, vo if my lungs were flat, I'd be dead. I'd be a slice of ham. Life not possible. Or does ham or bacon in your fridge walk around and, hey, no tolerance for the discrepance. <laughs> it's not happening, or is it? Or is any of the Manunakians and Draconians paying your bill? No, they don't. Reality. I have to say this because too much okie doke, fluky duke productions, fluky duke, here is reality. And we want to anchor this and make this real so this can be taken seriously. So, are you serious? No, <laughs> actually, I am Arcturian, by the way. So, um, so, the depth dimension gives you the power to bring an object that you have imagined so it is possible and conceived into three-dimensional form. There's no debate. 
three-dimensional form, not flat. Okay, again. Then, the third is the width dimension. Also, I want to call it, as the Vedic papers call it, if you want to read Veda paper, very interesting. It's not the ultimate religion, but they're very close to a lot, a lot of things that we don't even know, actually. So the breadth dimension is that you can give what you have created a function. That you can give life to what you have brought into 3D. And in 2D, I don't know how that's going to be possible. So meaning you created a motor that runs on fumes and gases and it does a spin and, and translates a certain amount of energy into another form of energy. That ha means you have given it breath. That's why in the Bible, when they, they, when they talk about our extraterrestrial friends coming from the sky with the breath of God, it's not the breath of God, it's the power of the manifestation skills of a further developed humanoid that can bring three-dimensional objects to life. And that is the breath of the spirit, that is the breath that is you giving it life. Like, I make a record, I imagine a song, I learn how songs are written, composition, arrangement, then I know beginning, middle and end and how I describe that. Then I use a pen and write down in, in three-dimensional in three dimensional form what am I doing? I'm using three-dimensional equipment to produce that track and then when that track is released and it's online and accessible for the world, I have given it breath and it has come to life. And for that you need three aspects of a three-dimensional plane. Plane, so you know, and let's make that absolutely clear. Plane Okay, Earth is a plane. That's why Earth is called plane or plan ET. I'm going to bring this in because you need to know all of this. It's 300 million years of uh, genetic interference in the Homo erectus. So part of our DNA is extraterrestrial. Know this and at some point we will find it out. You know, I have to laugh at debunkers because when they first translated old Hebrew text and said well Jesus was a messiah and his name was actually not Jesus and there was many many in his name many 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 prophets walked the earth before there's not just one is that they said uh, Nazareth didn't exist it's a myth but luckily over time we found that place and when you find physical objects over time for mythological texts, you need to hush your mouth because it's actually in physical form. It's just very, very old. So, for your eye with the lens and the retina and the pupil to see in, in a, in a, in a three-dimensional realm, you need volumetric systems in place for you to perceive a projected image on a wall and in 2d you're not seeing squat so if you were in a two-dimensional wor world right now now imagine this screen was flat this is what you would see this a line sound the way i'm talking to you that would mean sound travels in here well when you do that i'm a sound engineer by trade also um, in, a, in, a, in a piece of paper, sound is not really translatable. But in a room, a room, ram, 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 ra, 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 ra. Anyway, you need volume for this image to be projected. Any physicist will agree with me. And physics is my hobby since I was like nine. I should have a degree. But my stuff is so weird and wacky and fringe. I'm past that, <laughs> nor do I need it. I'm observing and I'm looking at what works. If you can fill a bucket with water from the well, then I look at, does that work? I can fill my bucket, why? Because it has volume. Let me show you here. 
If this bucket was as flat as this ring, how'd you bring water to your house? Okay? If, if a one-armed man could clap, show me how. Show me how a one-armed man can clap. You need volume. So see the eye here also? Length, width, depth is needed in order for an image in volumetric form to be reflected and for you to perceive it in your visual cortex. And the visual cortex also is an organ that kind of kind of looks like this, like a little, little pudgy. That is, is a, a volume. And without a volume, you're not hearing anything. As I say, pump up the volume. If you can't pump up the volume on a speaker, it would be in a flat dimension. But guess what? Inaudible for you. Impossible to perceive. So you understand. Inner stand, over stand, outer stand. Let me see. Inner, outer, over, and under. You see that you need volume in a volumetric dimension. This is a holographic universe, but the volumes are needed in dimensions for spirit in order to perceive. Even the essence of your soul has a volume, it is not flat. Now, to why flat earthers want to go flat? <sighs> you know, like I said, I love you. I don't, I don't want to create a war, but I have to say this, you know. We can't, you can't mix spirit realm. It's, it's spirit realm. And there's matter. Matter also means the mother. So in the spirit realm, yeah, earth is perceived as a plane I absolutely agree the way, the way you receive volumetric visions as you're standing on let's say on a big plateau of concrete that's a mile wide you with your little head you're standing on that little plane thingy and with your two eyes what you perceive is the plane but after three miles, that will curve, you understand? So your perception in spirit is planar, it's plain. So flat earthers come from the spirit realm, trying to simplify what they see. I'm leaning a little bit also on Bashar. I had the same kind of theory, so I won't, I'll, I'll put it together, is that flat earthers are overwhelmed by all of these things and I'm not even talking about what goes wrong in this plane which I'll do to wrap this up where things don't add up or match up is the spiritual perception is flat but the physical experience is spherical and marbles are not flat and if marbles would be discs they wouldn't roll if tires would be flat, would you be driving? Ask yourself these questions. If your lungs would be flat, would you be breathing? If everything would be flat, we couldn't call space space, couldn't we? We just have to really come back to our senses here and find an application. If my gloves would be flat, they wouldn't fit. No case. Not a lot of fun here. If you would be sliced into flats and apart without volume, life on Earth as an amoebic construct from the base up, impossible. Can we agree? So if anybody has an experiment that they can visually show, I consider a debate. But these theoretical ideas where people have no proof actually are useless to me. Same thing when people come to me and say, People that visit Sedona tell me where stargates are, and I live here, and I say, and I say, show me, and there's nothing physical vi visible. I kind of laugh. And, and I, as long as you don't have anything concrete here that can be experienced, and trust me, I believe in vortexes and magnetic currents coming from the earth and compass needles flipping out, but do not disrespect the physical aspect of things that work or do not work, like what I'm doing with my devices. Are you saving fuel? Or you're not saving fuel is there a change occurring or not 
let's say somebody had a disease and they wanted a treatment. Well, I want to see on the x-ray or after you come from the dentist, dentist, is there a change? Are you healing? Are you better? Or are you in the same state of being? And if nothing has changed, it means you have nothing. What I'm applying, <coughs> my technology for my store, and what I'm teaching is bring it to a physical experience that others can experience that as well. And then we all get much clearer. So, quantum physics. It is a particle and it, it's a wave. And in all truth, maybe I do a video on this, there is no particle. All you have is an oscillation in space and time. And Google that, they scanned an electron, they don't even see the electron, all they see is this. It's a freaking oscillation. And what you perceive when you focus here, of course you perceive this. But this is real and unreal because it goes from spirit to matter in a, in, in, in an, in a, in a zero field, in a no time. That's why it seems to be here. So particle physics also has to rethink their construct of solid matter. So call, maybe call that uh, Potache or Paraka like car, the body, you know? So we have a few things that are documented a little bit wrong and we have now the opportunity to correct that and then find ways to make it work. And again, like debunkers tried to debunk the Wright brothers who built the first plane motor driven heavier than air and said that it's impossible, flight industry will never take place. Big industrials in the 1800s said that it's impossible, that will never take place. Now I laugh, the light bulb was invented airplanes are created and now we also have a hoverboard and gravitational waves have been found and other scientists that I spoke to even from the 70s said there's no such thing as gravitational waves now I even go further and say once we know what to do with gravitational waves I mean I even heard people say gravity doesn't exist or chakras don't exist I'm like okay <laughs> I don't have a heart but what you see on an x-ray that's that's an illusion or that we, we got to be very careful with this is all an illusion and nothing exists and I don't really breathe air and nothing you know if it's all an illusion then why don't you dive without a breathing apparatus and survive and show me that you are in control of everything so these virtual avatars in cyberspace that are I mean you, you don't want to know how many people told me that they're Jesus that they're the second coming one person said she is the uh, older sister of Jesus. That's where it stops for me. Another one said that she is the embodiment of Archangel Michael and she's going to give birth to Isis. That's where it stops for me. Like, you're, that, that's, that is like, that's nuts. Like, you think I'm crazy? I think I'm very rational, very down to earth, and I want to make it physical. And if you want to all, we all want to have fun, we all want to experience that. I want to bring that home for everybody to experience so it can make sense. And that requires intelligence and yes sometimes things that you can repeat such as filling fuel in your tank and the engine runs and as long as this this is working then you have a function here but these stories I hear of magnetic motors that don't work and things that I've tested that don't work are preposterous um, and make the work that I do and others in the fringe science um, a little bit um, how do you say ridiculous there's been tests with remote viewers that scryed into the atomic world and they were told to draw out what they look like and I believe that that they did several experiments like hundreds all 100% where they looked at aluminum germanium niobium and they basically went into you know what do these oscillations look like? You know, what's the, the structure of the metal, like on a, on a you can say, subatomic energetic level? And these people drew it out. Um, uh, it's a book called Occult Science that has printed out everything these people have done with evidence. And um, I say this could be. Or germanium you know and when you have stuff um, like natives and there was a case where a plane went down in a jungle and the natives took their mushrooms and brought those people in that missed their relatives 
and then the spirits came in and gave him the coordinates where the plane was and see with satellite and everything they tried must have been like a couple of years ago they couldn't find the plane but after the shamans went in made contact with the spirit world the plane was located the, the missing people people were saved and when we tap into these powers and understand inner over outer however you will if you are in resonance with what it is then you will solve stuff then you make progress and then there's no debate but a solution to things that can really take place so again my opinion earth is not flat that's an illusion earth in the mind is flat um, some professor in 1816 introduced that uh, theoretical model um, I know there are things in this dimension that go wonkers as in magnetics as in timelines things overlap overlapping people seeing uh, mirages of cities that no longer exist reflections from other timelines there's a lot going on on this planet earth I call it plain ET or plan ET that we have yet to um, find leave yourself open for paranormal existence uh, that is true our technology is too primitive to trace a signal from outer space I think it's high dimensional and our consciousness needs to find a way where that takes place and that's where communication takes place I think it has to do with inner space and now the haters can all click hate if hating is what they do and it solves something for them or satisfies them those who like it please click like we're moving forward with clarity and systemic approach to things that are in front of us with volume because they're not flat also like I said Vedic texts show us um, yeah maybe I wrap this up so you can understand this um, that I find this very interesting um, that in the Mahabharata and other books you see earth the earth planes and they show like seven rings okay of dimensional layers So we have seven days of creation, just on a rough. And also if you have the Holy Trinity and in the center combined exactly, you know, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven planes of existence that has to do with hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Um, that triad is needed to connect dimensions. So that's also how uh, the Merkaba and all of these geometric symbols come forth uh, goes back to science and alchemy. So you have these seven layers and in that book I find it interesting it's like if your brain had the capacity to tune in you would see the giants are in this ring. Um, the, the, the holy sons um, son of men in the Bible, the Vimanas, the spaceships, the golden chariots, they're coming from this realm. And what they do is they cross. We are at the lowest. We are at ring number one. So these, so the holy ships, the royal, I'm not talking government. There's a lot of distortion here. Okay? Those that cross here are the royal ones and the divine ones. Also, the Anunnaki now are having the new name and the new timeline as they, the ones that healed, they are not fallen, they're called Anuhet. So, make that clear. That came through, Basha got that also. These are the Anuhet. So, elevate your mind, get up, get better. So, if you can master dimensional access by shifting your consciousness, which can be another video into different dimensional layers. You can basically be in Sedona, you go to Boynton Canyon, you sit there and you meditate. You meditate for 30 minutes, you close your eyes. And then you just squint and open your eyes very little and you see shimmering golden temples sitting on the mountaintop. You see streets, you see hovering things, you see spaceships. You have the capacity to look into that timeline where that takes place. So Sedona is here, Sedona is also here. And that takes place at the same time. And on that note, we're closing the chapter of Earth is not flat.
it has volume. If a woman gives birth, her belly is not flat. It has volume. Hence, we're living in a three-dimensional realm. And that three-dimensional realm is required for you to develop hyperdimensional awareness. And hyperdimensional, to wrap it up, is there are many, 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 many layers that Earth exists in. And they're all volumetric for you to experience. And when we learn to master this, we're basically out of here. So again, constructive criticism allowed if it's kindergarten, derogatory language, anything non-harmonious with the development and the furthering of the expansion in an open source consciousness, you'll be erased or blocked forever. Because I'm not here to convert, I'm here to see who and what is in resonance with where we're going. See you most certainly on the flip side. Pace. Thank you.